say welcome to all of our visitors. It's good to have Brother Ryan's family in church with us. It's a good day in church when the regulars have to give up their seat for the visitors. Amen. It's a good day in service. So, so you visitors, you sit wherever you want to. We will move to make accommodations for you. And we are glad that you are here with us. And I'm excited to baptize Margaret and Sammy again this morning after service. And we will say the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's two things I want you to focus on here this morning. What you see or what you hear. All right. What you see or what you hear. Because Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that now our current state, we see through a glass darkly. Amen. We know the story of Peter. As he is on the boat and the storm comes and Jesus sends his disciples across and the storms come and there's waves and they're scared. And they look out and they see what they think is a spirit. But Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come where you are. And this is what Jesus said. Come. What did Peter do? He gets out of the boat. He starts walking towards Jesus. And the Bible says when he saw the winds boisterous, a lot of chaotic things going on in our world that we can see. And a lot of times the media uses fear to control people. And the enemy uses the same exact tactic. But this morning the Holy Ghost wants you to focus on two things. What you're seeing and what you're hearing. Because through every situation and circumstance, God is speaking to you. And that's where you find your comfort. And that's where you find your peace. Is in the word of the Lord. But that's all that Jesus said. He said, come. And Peter was alive. Notice that was the same exact thing that Jesus said to Lazarus. Lazarus was dead. Been dead for four days. Martha said, by now he stinketh. You got one dead man, and you got one man that's alive. And Jesus says the same thing to both of them. Come. Can I tell you that's the answer to the world's problems? A four-letter word. Come unto me. All that are labored, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you're thirsty, come to Jesus. If you're hungry, come to Jesus. If you're discouraged, come to Jesus. If you are depressed, come to Jesus. Can I tell you, he has a table that is full of seconds and thirds and fourths and fifths. And he has a buffet that never runs out. Amen. I'm telling you here this morning, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm telling you, your answer is Jesus saying, come on. Come on. Amen. There's a lot of other things that you can focus on because we find Peter... He heard what Jesus said, that Jesus was God manifesting the flesh, and that was God. That's why he had power over the wind and the seas. Amen. Jesus said, come. And in the midst of hearing what God said, he saw the problem that was surrounding him. And if we're not careful, we can do the same exact thing that Peter did. And I've come to encourage you here this morning. I know the wind is there, I know the waves are there, and I know the chaos is there. But let me tell you what I also know is there. The Word of God. I said Jesus is there, and He is speaking to you, and He's saying, come on, where I am. Amen. Now, I've said it, but I'll say it again. If we slow down and listen, Jesus said the same thing to Lazarus, who was dead. He said, come, and Lazarus came forth not being able to see anything because he was dead. He had no senses. He didn't, he was not able to see, he was not able to taste or smell. And Jesus said, come. And that which was dead lived again. And then you have a live man who Jesus says to come. And in the middle of all the problems and situations, he starts focusing on the issue. Can I tell you what steals away good moments with God? The issues that you're focusing on. Amen. Now, what you're looking at 
And this is directly from God. I've, I've received this over the last couple of days. It's been heavy in my spirit. What you are looking at is stealing away from what God is speaking to you. What you are looking at and what you are focusing on is stealing away what God is trying to speak into your life and do for your life. Listen to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 12. While we look not at the things which are seen. We don't look at the things that we can see. That's interesting, isn't it? But rather, we look at the things that are not seen. Sounds a little bit confusing, huh? Amen. Can I tell you this morning? I want to encourage you here this morning. Stop letting the things that you see discourage you because God is working in the unseen. I say God is working for you behind the scenes. And if you don't, if you don't believe that, you allow what you are seeing that is not working out like you want to, to discourage you. What are the things that we look at? Because I just read the scripture. Don't look at what you can see. Because God is working for you behind the scenes. But look at what you cannot see. What is one thing that you cannot see? You cannot see God. The Bible says in uh, John 1 verse eight, uh, 18. No man that you and I has seen God at any time. But yet the scripture said in Hebrews 12. Looking unto Jesus. The author of. And the finisher, can I tell you, if God has started something in your life, it is His intention to finish it. God does not leave things unfinished. I said He will complete the work that, you, that He has started in your life, but you have to continue to make your pursuit toward Jesus. Looking unto Jesus... That is something that is unseen because in a world that is so distracted by pleasure... By fear, by responsibility, if we're not careful, we lose our focus on the very most important thing that has ever been, and that is Jesus Christ. Would it be a fair assessment that the world does not have their focus on Jesus Christ? Yeah, there are focus when there's catastrophic events or when there's issues that they don't have the answer to. It seems like when there is great amounts of tragedy, all of a sudden the world wants to turn towards Jesus. Can I tell you Jesus is good also on your good days? Can I tell you church is also good when you got all the bills paid and you got money in the bank and you don't need anything? I'm telling you, God to be your best friend and he'll also be your counselor and he'll also be anything you need to be. But we cannot be idle where we lose our focus because when Peter took his eyes, it's so incredibly important what we are looking at. Because when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus... That's when fear began to set in and he began to sink. I'm here to tell someone once again that is sinking this morning. It's time to refocus back on Jesus Christ. It's time to refocus back on the promises that he has for your life. It's time to refocus back on His plan for your life. It's time to refocus and give all of your attention and effort to Jesus Christ because I can tell you this morning that if you will give your life to Him and you will follow Him wherever He leads you, He will make your life into something that you could never dream of. That's why the Bible says that we walk not by sight. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. And this is something that, amen, is very Hard to do. But if we can ever learn. To walk by faith and not by sight. I believe that God can lead us in the areas. Of great. You cannot get your faith. Let's think about this for a second. We walk by faith not by sight. You can't even get your faith. 
from what you see good going on. Because if we're not careful, we get discouraged by the bad and we get encouraged by the good. And can I tell you, that's a dangerous place to be. Because you don't get your faith. The Bible says without faith, and to every man is given the measure of faith. You don't even have to be Pentecostal. The day you were born, God gave you the measure of faith. Amen. But James said it's not enough to have faith. You've got to use your faith. But when you walk by faith and not by sight, sometimes it can be when you see good going on, you get encouraged. And when you see bad going on, you get discouraged. But it's not by what you see. So you have to be careful that you don't find your encouragement by what you see good. The only place I believe you can truly find encouragement is from the Word of God. Let me tell you why. Because the Word of God never changes. It's good all the time. The Bible says it's forever settled in the heavens. Some people who like to watch the stock market. When it's up, woo, yeah, let's go. When their team is winning, yeah, it's going to be a good year. But what about when their team isn't winning? And what about when the economy's down? Where are you going to get your faith in there? Can I tell you, you cannot put your faith in the materialistic because all you can do is see the materialistic. But God says, I've got some things that you can't see that if you can see... If you can ever learn to see the unseen, and the unseen cannot be affected by what you see. That's why regardless of what goes on in our world, we know that we're protected. Why? Because our God is not dictated by a president. Our God is not dictated by a war. It's not dictated by none of that stuff. He said, I'm the my, my, my. Yes, come on. Let me tell you something today. If you look Because all you're going to get from God is encouragement, reproof. You're going to get love, joy, peace. You're going to get all that stuff. But when you start looking at things going on in the world, the Bible says men's hearts will fare them for fear of what's coming. Can I tell you the only thing I'm looking for that's coming is Jesus Christ coming back for His church. That's what He said. On the Mount of Transfigure, why are you staying gazing? For this same Jesus is going to return in like manner. Can I tell you today, the only thing you need to be looking for is Jesus coming to get you. Because there's a lot of other things that might be coming to get somebody, but they ain't coming to get you because you're God's child. Amen. And I don't have to fear. I said I don't have to fear what the world fears. Why? Because I serve a God that's got me in the palm of his hands. And Jesus said, ain't nobody going to take you out of my hands. So be careful that you do not get or build your faith on the good that you see. Because you are discouraged. We do get discouraged sometimes. But even in the midst of what you see going on bad, you have to know that God is working for you. And that God still has a plan for you. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith. Talk about faith here for a second. Because we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. Now what is faith? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Can anybody tell me what hope looks like? Can anybody touch hope? No. Hope is one of those unseen things that you better never lose sight of. Because we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. I've never seen heaven, but I'm hoping for it. I'm looking for it. Don't look, let me tell you, ain't none of us seen heaven. But if we're not careful, in moments of discouragement and distraction, we get our eyes off of the prize. I don't know what heaven looks like. I know the gold. I know what gold looks like, but I've never seen the streets of gold. But those are some things on the young scene that we better never lose sight of. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. If you're going to have faith... Amen. The Bible says faith is very powerful. Jesus said if you have faith, the grain of a mustard seed, you can tell the mountain to move itself and it will remove itself. Amen. Hope is what is not seen that you better never lose sight of. 
People that ended all, they got to a place and they gave up hope. But can I tell you this morning, despite your situation and however close you are to giving up hope, you have hope in Jesus Christ. You have hope in Jesus Christ. It is dangerous to build your faith on what you see. Can I tell you this morning, I don't care what it looks like. All I care about is what God said about it. I don't care what your situation looks like. That doesn't mean I don't care about your situation. But what is God saying about your situation? Let me tell you a story this morning. There's a pastor, uh, Brother Stovall. He pastors in Willis, Texas. He preached the service that I got ordained with the United Pentecostal Church in 2017. They couldn't have children. And his wife became pregnant with Logan. And uh, on the day of his birth, they had some complications. And the doctor came in and said, something went wrong. The baby's going to die. And Brother Stovall, you know, when you get news like that, that's when you really got to lose. That's really, that's really when you got to refocus back on hope and what God said. And he called a prophet and he said, I need you to pray for my son. And he said, what's going on? He said, well, they had some complications with the delivery. And the doctors just came in and said, there's no hope. The baby's going to die. And the prophet said, I don't understand. And Brother Stovall said, but what you don't understand is that this boy was promised to me by God. God gave Brother Stovall and his wife a promise that he was going to give him a child. And when that child got there, the doctor walked in and said, there's complications and your baby's not going to live. I'm talking about what you have heard and what you see. And Brother Snowball told the prophet, he said, God promised me that son. What has God promised you? And the prophet said, well, that changes everything. The boy shall live and not die. Has anybody ever done that? 
They're talking to you and you're thinking about what you're going to say back so you're not listening to them. Amen. Sometimes we can do that to God. You're trying to multitask. This is a big deal for us because our brains are unable to take in multiple sources of information at once. So if you're in the house of God and you're thinking about yesterday and you're thinking about what you have to do next week and we're not careful, and I do it too. I'm preaching to myself too. If I don't focus my mind on what the Word of God is speaking to me, then I can't properly, properly hear or listen. And that will affect my faith because faith only comes by hearing. Amen. And so if I am multitasking in the house of God and I'm not listening, because I'm telling you, every message that comes to you by God is tailor-made. Me and Brother Kite and the ministers that come behind this pulpit, we do not have a booklet of what we're going to preach years in advance. We wait on what God tells us, and then we give it to y'all. And most of the time it's for us too. Can I tell you, that is a specific message from God to you to encourage you, to strengthen you, and to give you hope. Don't let the problems of tomorrow, don't let the problems at home, the problems in the marriage, the problems with the children, steal away from your encouraging word that's coming week after week after week after week. Because your brain is not made to multitask. We have too many distractions. That's another reason. Distractions can be physical, mental, listening, or visual. This is one that's interesting. It's called suedo listening. And what suedo listening is, is it's a type of non-listening in which you appear attentive, attentive in the conversation while actually ignoring or only partially listening to the other person. Sometimes I do this to my children. You're busy and stuff and it's like they're talking but your mind is somewhere else. It's natural. These are human things. It's just... Some things we have, what, what may be distracting our faith, what may be causing to, uh, for us to be in discouragement, maybe we're suedo listening in the house of God. We appear attentive, but really our mind is occupied on other things. Another one is interjecting or rehearsing your response. Conversations can be exciting and interesting, so much so that you want to chime in before you forget your thoughts. Constantly jumping into the conversation, however, means you're not listening and instead just waiting for the other person to stop talk, talking so you can express your opinion. Would anybody like to guess what our number one dominant sense is as humans? You know, we got the five senses. What's our number one dominant sense? Vision. What does faith come by? Hearing. Vision is our dominant sense. And if we're not careful, this can work against us in our walk with God. 80% of what we learn from the world around us is due to perception. Can I tell you, I don't care what your situation looks like. I care. But what I'm saying is, is your life is built on the word of God. Your life is going to turn out how God wants it to turn out. Not how the situation says it's going to turn out. Right. Can we give God a good hand clap of praise right now? Eighty <laughs> percent of what we learn is through perception. This is very important to note. This is the difference between a blind person's hearing and a person that has sight. Studies show that the brains of blind individuals are better able to represent frequencies. This is why the Bible says we don't walk by sight. For a sighted person, having an accurate representation of sound isn't as important because they have sight to help them recognize objects, while blind individuals only have auditory information or sound information. Amen. Blind people are people that cannot see, can hear a lot better because that's all they have to rely on. That's their dominant sense. Can I tell you, when's the last time that you heard God's plan for your life? Or when's the last time that you let the situation at hand that you're seeing dictate what it wants to dictate your plan is for your life? Amen. This is why Jesus said, and it brought on a different meaning, if thy eye offend thee. That's what Jesus said. Pluck it out. 
A lot of times we label that as something bad that we're watching or something bad that our eyes are looking at. But can I tell you, if your eyes are causing you to be distracted on just normal problems of everyday life and you die and lose out with God because of those distractions, could not this mean that? What is Jesus trying to say? Don't rely on what you are seeing. If your eye offends you, it's better to go based on what you are hearing. Amen. Now, there was a rich man in Lazarus, and the rich man went to hell. And in hell, the Bible says he lifted up his eyes, and he, he asked Lazarus to give him a dip, a dip his finger in water and put it on his tongue. But the rich man had five brethren back at home, and this is what he said when he knew he couldn't get out of hell. He said, send somebody to testify to my family that they would not come to this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear. And the rich man said, no. If somebody would go to them from the dead and convince them, Abraham said that's not going to work. You see, sometimes we rely on the visual. And if we're not careful with children of God, we, we rely on the perception. Can I tell you it's not about the perception? There is no more powerful persuader than the Word of God. And if the Word of God and what you hear cannot persuade you, nothing else can and will persuade you. Jesus said this, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. They hear my voice and they follow it. Following has to be from hearing, not seeing. That's why in Revelation it said, he that hath an ear. What are you seeing or what are you hearing today? Where are you getting your encouragement from? Is it from what you're seeing or what you're hearing? Where you get your discouragement from. If it's, if it, is it what you're seeing or what you're hearing? He that hath an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now I go back to my scripture text. To explain to you why you cannot rely on what you see. What did Paul say? Now we see through a glass. Y'all are all blurry right now. But it didn't stop there. Now we see through a glass. This is why you can't rely on what you're seeing. That's referencing you. That's referencing us. You do not have 2020 vision in the kingdom of God. Because your existence depends on your listening skills. And how in tune that we as a body are with the spirit. Now we see through a glass... Darkly. Let's turn off all the lights. Paul is trying to explain to you your vision in the kingdom of God. Now we see through a glass darkly. I can barely see any of y'all right now. And it's not even fully dark in here. Yeah. So why would you make your assessment? And why would you try to get your discouragement from this? Your situation is not going to look good. So don't look. I've come to talk to you here this morning. What are you focused on in your life? Are you focused on the situation? Good or bad? Or are you focused on Jesus? Are you focused on the pursuit of Jesus? Because I've come to tell you. And I didn't have this. Let me tell you how I got this message. Two mornings ago. I'm brushing my teeth. Which is a good thing. My wife likes it when I brush my teeth. I'm brushing my teeth. And I have on a shirt. And in the mirror. My shirt has words on it. It's hard to read it. In the mirror. And God spoke to me the scripture. Now you see through a glass. Darkly. It's dark. And it's a little bit blurry. Your situation is never going to appear good. 
It's dark and it's blurry. If you try, well, maybe if I clean it. Well, maybe if something changes. I know Jesus is around. I know the house of God is around. I know prayer. But I'm just looking. Maybe it's going to change. Maybe it's going to get on blurry. Maybe the light's going to shine on it. It's not. Now you see through a glass darkly. Can I tell somebody here this morning? It's time to put that situation behind you. And it's time to stop looking at it. It's time to stop allowing it to dictate your life. It's never going to bring you encouragement. It's always going to play with your emotions. Because you'll be searching for a light that's not ever going to come. The only light that's going to come is when you're looking at Jesus Christ. But what the enemy wants us to do is he wants to deceive us by looking through a glass darkly and thinking that we're going to see what we want to see because that's how it is. If it's good, oh, it's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for praying. Thank you. Oh, it's better now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's not where you get your faith from. Can I tell you situations change? That's the beauty of an unchanging God. Yes, yes. And if you build your faith on an unchanging God, nothing can knock you out of the church. But what happens is, the enemy says, I know, I'll get them to build their faith on good music. Yeah. I'll get them to build their faith on a preacher that I preach it to them. <laughs> they like how he dresses, they like his socks. <laughs> that Sunday school apartment, yeah. their kids will leave and they'll say, Mama, I like it. I see the benefit for my family. Can I tell you the church is a benefit for your family? But that's not the reason I come to church. Because everything that I see is through a glass darkly. Can I tell you this morning? You will never see your situation how God sees your situation. Can I tell you why? That's why God doesn't send you a message. Well... It's over. Time to get the lifeboats. You're sinking. Have you ever wondered why God doesn't send that? But how many times have you felt like, by what you see, it's over? You know why you think it's over? Because you're looking through a glass darkly. And God has 20-20 vision. And he sees it for what it is. And if you're not careful, you'll see something for not what it is. And you, it is still away from who he is. And God said, I want you to refocus back on me and leave the situation that you're looking at that you don't have the answers to, that you don't even have the vision to look at. I thought about you, Sister Marty, because there was a promise given to you of Dustin. I don't care what it looks like. That's what you heard. But the enemy will try to be like, oh, it's awful. People, oh, it's awful. We're going under. Oh, it's awful. The enemy tries to even play on my emotions at times. Well, everybody sings that. Can I tell you, I don't care what it looks like. God is still God. Come on, stop being distracted. Stop being discouraged by what you're looking at. Jesus Christ is still on the throne today. Stop looking at everything that's wrong. 
Can I tell you why he wants you to stop looking at it? Because if you don't have clear vision, what you think is wrong, God might think is right. How can you assess right or wrong? How can you assess really if it's working against you? Amen. My Bible says all things work together good for them that love God and has been called according to His purpose. That's what my Bible says. All things work together good. So if you're not careful, what you all oh, this is bad for me. This is bad for us. This is bad, bad, bad. Everything is bad. And God's saying, no, that's actually good, 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 good. And so what happens is you label everything bad and God is labeling everything I didn't mean to spit. I'm sorry, brother. Oh, God, this is bad. Is it? If God's in control, if God's in control, is it really that bad? Sometimes the forest has to burn down. Some new green things can show up. you've built for 20 or 30 or 40 years and no God, this is my force. It's burning and all the smoke and all the fire. And you're like, God, please put out the fire. Please put out the fire. Please change it. Please make it right. Oh, it's not looking good. I can't even see anything. God says, hang on. I'm still in control. Can I tell you, even when you think you're in control, you're not in control. That's right. God says, I'm going to let it burn. But what you don't see is the thicker, greener, taller trees and plants. And how many times you ever went past something that burned, it's just all black. And then all of a sudden, a year or two later, all that pretty green starts coming. Can I tell you what has been done away will grow a green? I said, what has died will grow back again. As pastor, there are so many things with y'all, and that's not a negative statement, that can distract me and discourage me. But what I do, I focus back on what God said. Brother Sims, who was here preaching for us a couple weeks ago, since then he has been elected pastor of a church. Everything was telling him not to take it. But you know what God told him? About a year and a half ago, he said, invest in the people. I, can I tell you? Refocus back on what God's purpose is for your life. You're not responsible for the outcome. God is. And if you will give everything to him and say, God, I'm going to stop looking at it and I'm going to stop letting it control me. That's a very hard place to get. I'm going to let I'm going to look at you and I'm going to let you control me. And I'm giving these situations to you that I keep staring at and hoping will change. And I'm going to trust you that you change it in your time and in your will and in your plan. Because now everybody say now, now. you're looking through a glass darkly. Don't even trust what you see. Trust what he says. Because the doctor said the baby's going to die. But what you don't understand is that God promised me this baby. Can we lift our hands right now all over the house? I want you to revisit what God has said about your life. I want you to revisit your purpose. Not what is going on. Not what is transpiring, not what is facing you or fighting you or tormenting you, but I want you to refocus back on Jesus and say, God, I'm coming to where you are. I'm coming to where you are, Jesus. I'm not looking at the winds. I'm not looking at the boisterous waves. I'm not looking at everything that's going on. i got to know, God. I know what you said. I know that you said you're going to give me an expected end. I know that you said you're never going to leave or forsake me. I know it, God. I know it. Thank you for it today, Jesus. Just, just a few. You don't have to lift your hands, but just for a few more moments, can we talk to God here this morning? Just a few more moments. Jesus. God, I pray right now for faith that might be struggling in the house. 
God, that they would be reminded of what you have said about them. That they would be reminded that you have a plan and a purpose about them. I've come to tell somebody this morning, you have not lost your purpose. Amen. The situation might have changed, but you have not lost the purpose. God still has a purpose and a plan for your life. I thank you for it today, God. I thank you for doing the work in these people's lives here this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you today, God. Thank y'all for coming this morning. Amen. I hope that this encouraged you. It definitely challenged me. Something that I got to remind myself daily. When situations arise that try to discourage. Like, all right, God, you knew about that. I'm going to focus back on you and your word. Amen. And what you said. I know you called me here. And that's why I'm here. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.